Uh, I'm Xiang Ling from Quattro Technology, and I'm glad to be here to introduce our work on uh, condition for re-ranking in recommendation. So uh, let's first look at the brief introduction of uh, real-life recommender systems. Uh, re-ranking serves as the last stage in real-life recommender systems, uh, which usually consists of uh, two stages. Uh, the first stage is candidate's retrieval. It uh, selects candidates for ranking uh, from maybe uh, billions of candidates. Uh, and the second stage uh, ranks the candidates from the last stage. And the re-ranking uh, tries to reorder the items uh, from ranking stage so that they are presented to the user in an optimal order. Uh, let's look at an example. If a user is recommended with a first uh, sports video and then two consecutive music videos, uh, the user may be tired of music video and choose not to like the third recommendation. Uh, but if we reorder re the recommendations in uh, music, sports, and music uh, order, then the user might uh, give three likes. So uh, re-ranking tries to reorder the items in an optimal order. Uh, and this causes a big challenge for uh, the engineers because uh, given n items for uh, as candidates, we have exponentially large uh, number of permutations. And uh, the most common uh, strategy to solve this problem is to split the task into two stages. The first stage is generation stage, uh, where uh, engineers use models or other rules uh, to generate a number of possible perm uh, permutations. And during the second stage, uh, an evaluation model selects the best uh, sequence as the final recommendation. Therefore, generation stage matters a lot because it decides the best possible permutation. Uh, therefore, we, when we look at the possible generators for uh, sequence generation, we get several choices, like VAE uh, or GAN, but they both suffer from uh, some uh, limitations like low fidelity and unstable optimization. Uh, therefore, there are relatively few attempts in a re-ranking. So uh, what about diffusion models? They achieve great successes in image synthesis tasks. Uh, they have some advantages like high uh, fidelity, easy training, uh, but they also suffer from uh, low scalability. And the most important feature of diffusion models, uh, in my opinion, is generates by iterative refinement. So uh, it first uh, corrupts the sample uh, with noises, uh, then tries to reconstruct the original symbol by uh, parameterized models. Uh, therefore, the nature of iterative refinement naturally fits the requirements of re-ranking tasks, because in even the best recommender systems, we still don't know if the recommendation is optimal, is already the best recommendation to users. We always, uh, we cannot find the ground truth. Therefore, uh, the idea of iterative refinement might be a good choice because we don't know the, what best sequence looks like, but we can always try to improve uh, from the uh, current recommendation. And we summarize the challenges uh, by, uh, for applying diffusion models on dif uh, re-ranking tasks. Uh, the first is uh, most diffusion models uh, are uh, originates from continuous data domain like image synthesis, uh, but in real life recommender systems, the items or videos uh, are, pre are represented by discrete IDs. So the, uh, the data domain between uh, CV tasks and recommendation tasks are different. The second uh, limitation is uh, the purpose of recommender systems is always to provide best recommendations to achieve Pos uh, the positive user feedback. Therefore, we, uh, we want the generation process to be highly controllable uh, so that the model learns how to generate item sequences under the condition of achieving positive user feedback. And the third, uh, third challenge is that uh, real life recommender systems usually deals with uh, a huge uh, number of requests uh, per minute 
uh, per second. Uh, therefore, we have latency limited uh, in real life systems. And we provide three uh, solutions to solve the challenges. Uh, first, we design discrete diffusion models so that they can uh, be applied to discrete data domain. Uh, then we introduce feedback conditions into the model so that the model learns how to generate under the uh, positive feedback conditions. And third, to reduce the latency limit, we try to reduce reverse steps during inference. So before we go deep into the details of our model, let's first uh, look at uh, diff what diff diffusion model is. So the key idea is to generate by reconstruction. Uh, diffusion model consists of two processes. Uh, the first is formal process. It corrupts a sample with noises. And in most cases, uh, especially for image synthesis tasks, uh, it uses Gaussian, uh, Gaussian distribution. Uh, and the second process is reverse process. Uh, uh, after uh, the formal process, the image is corrupted, uh, uh, is corrupted step by step, and finally we reach a point when the uh, when the image is uh, somehow uh, just Gaussian noises, and uh, the reverse process try to reconstruct from the uh, corrupted sample with a uh, uh, parameterized model, so that the model tries to reverse the forward process back. Uh, to reconstruct the original symbol. And in original diffusion models, both processes are Markovian, uh, which means the corruption process uh, only depends on the current state of the image. And the reverse steps also uh, only considers the uh, current corrupted symbol to reconstruct. Uh, and the last function is to maximize the likelihood of, of reconstruction. And usually the loss function is uh, intractable, so uh, the surrogate loss function is elbow loss. And now uh, let's look at uh, our solution, DCDR, uh, which is short for discrete conditional diffusion uh, re-ranking model. It consists of uh, two pro uh, two stages. The first stage is sequence, gener uh, sequence generation, which DCDR works. And second stage is sequence evaluator. Uh, a model selects the best sequence from the candidates uh, which are generated by DCDR, and both models are built upon transformer. So uh, to solve the first challenge of continuous and discrete data domain, we design uh, discrete diffusion processes. Uh, of course, they are more coving uh, processes. Uh, the first, uh, we list two examples of forward process. Uh, the first is permutation level. Uh, uh, to summarize, uh, the permutation level diffusion forward process swaps a pair of tokens in the uh, sequence randomly. Uh, so uh, look at this, uh, this figure. Uh, if the original sequence is A, B, C, and in each uh, in next step, we choose with a probability to swap a pair of items uh, uniformly. So in, in this case, we swap B and C, and next step, the sequence becomes ACB. And next time we may swap A and B, then it becomes BCA. So uh, it is a discrete uh, noise injection process. And each step, we swap a pair of tokens randomly, and uh, if we keep doing this, finally we get a random permutation. And the second process is token level. Uh, forward process. Uh, this process is much simpler. Uh, in each step, we replace each token at each position randomly. Both processes are easy to operate, and they both are Markovian. And we list the transition matrix here. Uh, they are very useful in the loss derivation. Uh, next step, we introduce conditions into our model because we want the generation model to generate uh, item sequences that uh, user likes, uh, which leads to positive user feedback. But how? Uh, we make it very uh, simple. We just inject uh, user feedbacks or as conditions and use them as input uh, to the parameterized uh, model. And to uh, improve the uh, accuracy of modeling, we choose to use feedback at each position in the sequence as a condition. Uh, during training, uh, during training, uh, the exposed 
uh, logs are collected from real user feedbacks. Therefore, the uh, acting sequences may consist of both positive and negative feedback. But during inference, we want to generate item sequences that achieve、uh, positive feedbacks as much as possible. So we use、uh, all positive feedback as conditions for inference, and this allows us to use uh, most uh, real-life exposed item sequences as training data,、uh, and this provides uh, good training uh, uh, tra training scalability. Uh, and the, and the third challenge、uh, is about latency limit. So we try to reduce reverse steps during inference because the reverse steps goes step by step. If the number of steps a、uh, reverse steps is too large, the latency is not acceptable. And to achieve this, we mainly use、uh, three strategies. The first, we、uh, do not start from pure noise like uh, usual. Uh, Use the protocols in diffusion model for image synthesis because in real life recommended systems,、uh, the items are always ranked、uh, from stage to stage, and we believe that the sequence from last stage tells us something.、Uh, they are may, they may be not optimal, but they still、uh, they still achieve、uh, they, they are still good choices. So we start from a sequence from last stage. And the second choice, we use beam search to generate multiple sequences.、Uh, to、uh, generate multiple sequences, we we can use、uh, multiple corrupted samples and conduct reverse steps、uh, repeatedly. That's one choice, but that is kind time consuming. So we use beam search to reduce reverse steps. The third choice is to use early stop because、uh, the reverse step can goes on and on and on, but、uh, the improvement may get. They are quite marginal、uh, when these、uh, number of steps reaches、uh, at some point. So we use、uh, early stop. And、uh, the loss functions uh, is like this. And、uh, actually, they they are quite、uh, they are the original original formulations for、uh, diffusion models.、Uh, in the case of、uh, of DDPM in with Gaussian noises,、uh, the loss function becomes a weighted sum of.、Uh, Of root、uh, square, uh, of squared loss, but、uh, for the discrete domain,、uh, we use some derivations、uh, because we have already designed、uh, the forward process. So we get transition matrix, and we can always、uh, adapt the transition matrix into the loss function. And about the model architecture, they are、uh, both the gener、uh, generation model and the sequence、uh, evaluator model are built upon transformers.、Uh, the difference is that、uh, during a generation stage, because、uh, recall that we in introduce user feedback as conditions for generation, so we choose to use user,、uh, user feedback as input to、uh, to the DCDR generation model. Uh, we both consider interactions between candidates and the interaction、uh, with the user history into the model. And for the conditions, we choose to use binary feedback conditions for simplicity.、Uh, we compare our our approach with、uh, several re-ranking methods like lambda mod, PRM, and so on.、Uh, we also uh, use uh, EG re-rank, which is a method. A re-ranking method with、uh, reinforced training, and we also mo、uh, modify diffusion LM,、uh, which、uh, first adapts diffusion models for、uh, language modeling、uh, for、uh, re-ranking task, and we also compare our methods DCDR with token level、uh, forward process and DCDR with permutation level process, which is short for DCDRT, DCDRP. And we use avatar and video rank. Video rank、uh, is a dataset collected from quite short.、Uh, and avatar、uh, is uh, uh, is a public dataset. And the、uh, the reason we use two these two datasets because they consist of sequence、uh, sequences displayed in real sessions.、Uh, and as as for the conditions for DCDR, we、uh, we try to use a binary value indicating whether a video. Uh, is uh, achieves positive feedback or negative feedback.、Uh, so here、uh, we choose whether it's completely watched. 
Yeah, uh, and the uh, hyperparameter, the influence of hyperparameters are listed here, uh, and we can get several conditions, uh, several conclusions. Uh, first, a proper number of beam size improves the uh, recommendation robustness. Uh, second is uh, the increase, uh, the improvement uh, becomes marginal when the number of reverse steps reaches a certain value, uh, which justifies uh, our early stop strategy. And the third, uh, too much noise injected during training stage may add difficulty to the learning process. Uh, this, uh, these conclusions are uh, uh, match some uh, experience, experience, experiences from other papers. And we conduct online experiments to verify the uh, effective, effectiveness of DCDR. And we can see that DCDR uh, at permutation level brings online performance improvements. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, the stepwise uh, generation process also causes latency costs of online services. Uh, but compared to its performance improvements, uh, it is acceptable. So here are the uh, conclusions of our work. Uh, first, diffusion models open a new space for ranking tasks in recommendation. Uh, and discrete diffusion model fits recommendation data domain since uh, most recommendation data uh, consists of IDs instead of uh, natural languages. And uh, the system always aim for positive use, uh, user feedback. So the model should be controllable and we provide a way to uh, inject user uh, feedback into the generation process. And the DCDR serves as a general framework for discrete service generation, uh, sequence generation, as, as long as the uh, forward, uh, forward process are uh, Markovian and user feedback conditions are, are provided. Uh, and finally, it really causes latency costs in real life systems. Uh, but it is acceptable uh, if it brings uh, enough online improvements.